Welcome everyone to this draw therapy tutorial. My name is Jacob Swing and I am back from a long hiatus. The last couple months I've had a lot of personal things that I needed to do. I was graduating from school and I was moving and all sorts of stuff. So because of that I was unable to make tutorials and things like that. So anyway I appreciate you guys watching this video. This is another episode of editing your photos. Now you might notice I didn't put the normal intro on this video. If you want to look at the timeline down below, I will have delineated in the description uh, the different parts of this tutorial so you can just click through down there to figure out where you want to watch. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. This is a photo by Wanderson and, and Wanderson took this photo in the UK and thank you so much for sending it in. So let's go ahead and get started editing this. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to find out where things are really in focus. One way to tell if things are in focus is actually to come up here to the focus mask and turn that on and that will actually show us what raw therapy considers to be in focus. So as you can see down here on the ground is really in focus and the the thistle, the thistle plant here is in focus, and then we have the boat in the background. So if you were ever wondering how to how to do that, and you can actually use that to your advantage. Um, so if you go ahead and come here to let's say like the local contrast, and I turn that on, you can see more becomes in focus. So, uh, but then I can even turn on haze removal. Even more parts of this photograph are considered in focus. And you can. The other thing is the intensity of the green dot also indicates how in focus. So a really intense dot is very in focus. So like right here, this dot would be considered incredibly in focus. And then these back here are much more out of focus. So anyway, let me go ahead and just reset this photo. And let's go ahead and go through our initial our our initial edits, which is of course adding in we have an automatic lens selection, which is great. That saves us some time. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I think this is gonna look better as a square image. So I'm gonna change it to square. And I'm doing that for two reasons. The first one is if this is an Instagram photo or something like that, you can obviously you need a square image. But second of all, it's going to be really hard for me to keep this sky back here properly exposed when I properly expose the rest of the image. So just by cropping that down a little bit, I can get a better exposure overall and I have less post work to do once I'm finished exposing. Now instead of coming over here and adjusting this exposure in the blacks, okay, so let's go ahead and change the exposure a little bit. Now you can see that I'm getting this blowout here in the sky, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that back. Actually, this image is, is really well, really properly exposed. And in, in order to bring up the lightness of the image without overexposing the sky, I'm going to use this lightness slider. And you can see that now we're having these curves get spread out further across the image. So I'm gonna just gonna keep doing that until I feel like the image is properly lightened. And then I can add in some of the blacks to bring, bring in a little bit of contrast. And then finally, I'll actually bring up the contrast slider. Now that that is done, uh, we can go ahead and bring up the saturation. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put this image in the queue to process it as it is right now because I like this exposure. I'm also going to just go ahead and reset all of these sliders back down to zero. Boy, you can really see how dark that image got and put that in the, pro in the queue as well. And now let's go ahead and I'm going to change these to a TIFF uncompressed and process the cube. Now let's open up GIMP. Okay. And now I can bring in our properly 
edited image and the original image. The reason I'm bringing in the original image is I really like that sky. I just want to keep it. So let's go ahead and add in an image mask and we'll say black full transparency and click add. And now we'll hit P on our keyboard and increase our brush and select a good brush. I just downloaded a bunch of these brush presets this morning. And so let me see, I'm going to take the hardness down to zero and the size up. Alrighty. So I'm actually going to darken all of this up because it'll just be easier in the end. Except for that. You know what? Go ahead and Control Shift D, select this image, bring it up to the top, and then come here to Filters, I'm sorry, Color, and Desaturate. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and go to Colors and Levels. Select the little white dropper here and select in the clouds and then select the little black dropper here and select there in the, the trees next to the clouds and then click OK and then hit Control A to select all and then Control C and select our image here, our image mask and Control V and then click the anchor. There we go. So now what we can do is alt click in order just to see the image and then hit F on our keyboard and let's just go ahead and select all of this and I need to add in a little bit down here. All right and hit shift B make sure black is selected shift B selects our paint bucket tool and just fill that in with black and now if we alt click again we can see that that looks pretty okay. Let's just clean it up by making a really big brush, something like that, and take the force down to something really low like 15, and then make sure black is selected and just go over this until the outlining kind of stops. So now if we look at our mask, you can see kind of what's going on here. We have a nice fade into the full tr uh, opacity of the sky. And if you don't like kind of having this fade, you can just bring the hardness of your brush up and change the color back to white. And then you can kind of go back over and bring that back in. So you can spend as much time as you want, but that's where I'm going to leave that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and grab the bottom image, which is this right here. And let's come here to colors and I'm going to go to curves. Actually, before we do that, let's duplicate control shift D duplicate that. There we go. That way we can always come back to this bottom copy. We can go to curves and the first thing since we're good on the exposure side of things let me go ahead and grab the red and let's go ahead and just increase the red just just a hair okay something like that to bring out some of the saturation in these stems here same thing with the green let's increase the green and actually that those red and greens will kind of uh, balance each other out and then for the blue I want to increase the blue here in the middle, but then decrease it on the sides because I want this, this boat, the blue in the boat to be nice and proper, proper looking. Okay. So this is before, after. Now, if I look up here, uh, that, that's okay. Next, I'm going to come up here and go to Hue Saturation. Let's just bring up the saturation here in the greens and uh, overall in the master so I can really saturate it. But we don't want to go too much. The yellow, if you're saturating green, you also have to saturate yellow as well. We can actually turn it off with the opacity 
So I'm going to bring this to something like 60% uh, because I feel like I overdid the saturation. And now I'm going to duplicate both of these and bring the bottom image up and merge it down. And next I'm going to go to the blend mode and here to soft light and then bring the opacity down to something like 30 percent and that just adds a good clarity to the photo all right last but not least let me go ahead and add in a layer let me get rid of that add in a layer at the top control shift d oh no i'm sorry control shift n new layer and let's go ahead and add in a vignette so i'm going to right long press here and grab my ellipse tool and let me just drag out an ellipse right there so and you can see that I didn't add okay there's a feather radius of one sure so uh, now let's go to the selection and feather and let's feather by 200 and 50 and then let's do that again selection feather 250 is the maximum so just keep feathering by 250 and we can see that there's now these straight lines going on and that's uh, what we want that means that our feathering is happening so now let me invert, control I to invert, and then select black as the color, and shift B to select our fill tool. And that's a good looking vignette, oops. But of course, we don't want 100% black, we just want that to be nice and subtle. Maybe 20%. Now the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate all of these images because I want to keep them if I want to ever go back. Oops, this one. And I'm just going to merge them down. And I'm just going to come here to the exposure and increase the exposure just a hair because I feel like it needs it. So that was before. This is after. Now it really pops. Okay, so there you go. That's how I would edit this image. I may spend a little more time and actually mask out these leaves to kind of bring more of a, uh, go ahead and saturate those a little bit more without affecting the rest of the image. But I think this looks really good. Uh, Wanderson, I really appreciate you sending in your your photo. If any of you have a photo that you wish to send in, feel free. The email is in the about section of my channel. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you are all being really safe out there. So thank you all.